this video, I'm going to walk through a few tips and tricks that I use to design a blog to make it beautiful, really easy for the reader and giving it some visual appeal natively within Squarespace. No custom code needed. These are design features that are built into Squarespace. So what we want to focus on first is clicking on this blog post here. Now I do want to note one thing. Please note that there's a white background here. I'm going to show you why this is important in a moment, but for now, just note that there's a white background there. Okay. So now I'm in this blog post, beautiful, clean layout, Texas center, really nice. There should be more images. There should be more content, but this is a, a sample blog post. Now let's begin to edit. You could either hit edit up here in the corner, or you could just double click into the page. So one thing I'm just going to do for this blog post, just for simplicity's sake is I'm going to add an image here and then I'm going to hit search for images and then I'm going to hit free images. And let's just say this is the one I want to add. So that image will upload and we are good to go. I'm going to click on this little pencil here. This is where all the magic happens. And what I want to say about this when we begin is that the changes you make here affect every single blog post in the blog that you have. So these design changes go across the board. It's not just for one blog post. For example, if you change the color here to bright two as the background, well, all your blog posts are going to look like this. It's a bit unfortunate. It's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because you don't have to go in and change your blog posts for every little change you make or update over time. But at the same time, if you want some blog posts to have a darker background versus a lighter background, well, you just got to note that it's going to change everything. So for now, I'm going to use dark one and let's go back to formatting. All right. Now here are some more tips and tricks that really are helpful in this process. First and foremost, content width. All right. So this is a big one. Let me change this to wide. This is a big problem. Now this looks beautiful up here. The bigger challenge is this, this reading experience right now is horrible. Let me show you why. So this is a post on medium about someone talking through typography for web. And this is something you want to consider. It's the same as reading a book. Textbooks do a horrible job of this, but if you're reading a fiction or nonfiction book, they do a great job of this. So this ideal range here is about 12 to 15 words, which is 40 to 60 characters. I use words because it's easier to read through and go through the page. But 12 to 15 words or 40 to 60 characters is ideal for a blog post. When you get too wide, it's hard for the eye to follow the lines and know where they're at. So in a blog post like this, it gets really hard for somebody to go across this entire line and find themselves at the next line. So I recommend going back into this editor, changing wide to custom. You could try narrow. Narrow works probably the best, but I would say with this font size, it's still a little bit too much. So I would probably go to custom and then just start playing with it there. Now, one thing you'll notice is this is a little bit, this is weird. Now, one thing you'll notice is I press custom, but it's not giving me an option to adjust it. So I have to click out of it and then click back into it. And now you'll see the custom content width. Don't know why it does that, but it does. Currently I have it set to 45 and I think that follows our rule of about 12 to 15 words per line. Let's do a count. Okay. So I just counted these two lines here. Let me highlight those, these two lines here. And those were both about 13 words, which is perfect. So this is a really good width. A final note on this is just ensure that you make this adjustment according to your font and your font size. If your font is bigger than this, well, you may want the page to be a little bit wider, but you can make those adjustments here with the custom width. Next thing I want to know is I want to talk about the space between each line. So between this line and this line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click save and I'm actually going to go to the design site style. So so I'll go back, click on design, click on site styles, and then I'm going to go to fonts. Now, what we're talking about is paragraph text. And this is something that I think if you're building your first website, often people will bring the text closer together. I just moved it accidentally. So let's see, it was at 1.6, I believe. So oftentimes people will bring the text closer together, almost too close. Just be mindful that the more space in between the text, obviously not too much, but the more space between the text gives breathing room to each line. So 1.5 is a little bit shallow. I'd probably go 1.7, maybe 1.8 and 1.9 at a max. But if you compare the reading experience of this at 1.9 EM for the line height versus let's go to say 1.8, 
three. This looks a lot harder to read. It's really tight. The words are really close together. This gives breathing room to your site. So I'm gonna save it at 1.9. I'm gonna go all the way back out, save, go out of the editor, and now we're good to go. All right, so let me go back into this blog editing and I'm gonna click this pencil again. Now there's a lot of options here. Text align is, this is for the title. So it doesn't change this. It just changes the title. Don't know why they don't say more about that meta position information like this where do you want it below the title above the title so you see that uh, what is it going to show there so there's four options categories dates and author names so if i add the date it'll add that it's a weird formatting thing right there which i can fix later show author again weird formatting thing let me just add all of that that is currently at 1.0 line height uh it's literally just perfect um it's too close in my opinion but it's just touching so this is where you could add all of that and then author profile, if you change this, you can't see it because it's at the bottom of the page. So if I go to the bottom, you'll see this profile here. If I click away from it, it goes away just like that. All right, so that is all that. The way I recommend it is something like this, depending on what you're doing. If you're updating your blog consistently, add the date. And then I have the author profile at the bottom, so I don't necessarily need the author name at the top. Depending on how you're publishing, if you have a lot of different authors, well, you might wanna do that. You might wanna show it at the top and bottom. Next up is this style here for bullet pipe or let's see dash. So let me add this in. So you see there's two different pieces of information here and it's adding this little styling in here. So you could adjust that here, what you want that to look like. So I'm just going to leave it as a bullet for now. And then you'll see header spacing here. So as you adjust this, it gives you a little bit of breathing room. I think 50 is ideal. You could probably go a little bit closer to say like 20 somewhere between 20 to 50, 20 to 60 could be good. And those are the main things to format for your blog. Now, obviously I have this issue with the metadata, which we'll go back and fix now, but overall you've just adjusted this. Now, let me get out of this and hit save. And now I'm back at the main blog page. Now, remember earlier, this was a white background. As you can see, this background here for this section follows the format. I'm actually not sure why, but it follows the format of every unique blog post. And so this background here for the specific blog post overview is the same as every individual blog post. Hope that makes sense. So you'll wanna pay attention to that while you make edits, but I'm gonna go back in here to this post. I'm gonna click design, and then I'm gonna hit site styles. And here we're gonna go back to font. And then here for miscellaneous, I'm gonna take a look at the line height. So you can see the line height is actually 0.8. So I'm gonna adjust that and you'll see just like that, it's given a bit of breathing room to the top text here, which already looks a lot better. Next, one recommendation I have is to use the Squarespace themes plugin for a sidebar. So if you wanna add a sidebar or you're definitely investing in your blog, I highly recommend having a sidebar that you could build and customize and add to your Squarespace site. Now, natively, Squarespace does not have this built in. So use a plugin like this. I think this one's like, what is it, $60? You could build this in, add it to your site. It's really easy to use. Once you set it up, you're good to go. It's very easy to edit. And from there, you could have your blog content here and your sidebar here. So after that, you can use up more of the space here on the page. But overall, everything looks really nice. So as someone's going through your site, they get the look, the feel, everything they need for the blog post. It's really clear and easy to use. Final note here, I have a separate video that walks through designing this unique page. So this is the blog post overview where it shows all your different blog posts, how many you want to show, how you show them, designing this page. I have a page that breaks this down completely. And so how to design it, how to create it, and how to make the user experience optimal. So check out that video for more information on how to adjust this page uh, so that you could format it and design it and leverage everything you can um, on your blog. Hey guys, thank you for watching today's video. If you got value from this video, hit that like button. When you hit the like button, it lets the YouTube algorithm know some important information, but it lets me know that you got value from this content. If you have any questions, drop them down below in the comments. And with that, if you got value from this video and if you're looking for more content just like this, I publish a new video every single week, if not multiple videos every week, hit that subscribe button. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.